Yo, what's up with it? It's your boy Nooney. It's Leo in the third house, and we back with another week. Yo, what's up with it? This your boy Nooney, and it's Leo in the third house, back with another reader. This is going to be another pick a card reader. We're going to be asking the question, what do your ancestors think of you? So, uh, ooh, it's been a long day. I'm a little tired. But, um, anyway, I was thinking about this reading because a friend of mine had sent me a reading that had to do with ancestors. And I was thinking about ancestor reading for a minute, plus my mom had mentioned it. So, yeah, it was about that time. All right. Uh, what else? Well, somebody mentioned me. Okay, we'll see about that. Um, as always, thanks to those people who be liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, getting involved. Thanks to those people who just be here, just here. That's the best part. Yeah, I enjoy this. So I'm back. Yo, I went on. I went on like a world tour. I told you I was doing that, right? So I went to California. Then from California, because my flight was delayed for like 24 hours. Then I went to Tijuana. That was pretty dope. Um, you know, I came to Cancun before I went to LA, so it was exciting. So I've been like everywhere so far. Not everywhere, but I've been, you know, more places than I normally go in a year. I went in like 40 days, so that's exciting for me. Definitely a change of pace. So here I am. Anyway, I got four piles here. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna try something different. So after this spill, I'm gonna cut, then come back, and I'm gonna show you the close up of the crystals, and then I'm gonna start the piles. So take a look at this picture and tell me, or not tell me anything, <laughs> pick your pile and then go ahead to your timestamps. Oh, I don't always say this, but timestamps are in the description box. Uh, you know, a lot of people always come to me and say, well, not a lot of people, but a couple people have come to me and said, hey, I, you know, I had to watch the whole video to get to my pile. And I'm like, well, you know, there's a timestamp in the description box. So in the description box, there's timestamps. So you don't have to watch the whole reading. Just find your pile. Okay. All right. All right, so this is gonna be pile one, this is gonna be pile two, this is gonna be pile three, this is gonna be pile four. All right, take a second look at your pile, and I'm gonna get started over here with pile one. Boom, pile one. So, pile one, uh, what do your ancestors think of you? Okay, so yeah, ancestors think very highly of you. They see you as very courageous. Um, they see you, so I got, um, this time I used, what are they called? I used, um, what is this called? I forgot that, I think it's the star, the star codes, or not the star codes, it's the um, star family or something like that i forgot but anyway i don't normally use this deck but today i'm seeing that um it says that you're not alone so they see you as a lone wolf all right your ancestors see you as a lone wolf very strong they also see you as the golden child i have the golden child here they see you as a child a person who's taking care of their inner child who has a lot of life a lot of spunk um they do see you as someone who may be a little bit um what's the word i'm looking for maybe mischievous like, because confession, Confessions is here, which is about confessing um, some type of scandal. So they see you as maybe being a little bit mischievous, but like on your own. You're a person who's off to their own. We got the Hermit here, too. And the Eight of Cups. So they see you as someone who's uh, not afraid to walk away or spend time alone. All right. They see you as a child or a person who has rare gifts. So they see you as a I said child. So they see you as a child to them who has rare gifts. And they want you to know that you're not alone. You have a community around you. So more, most likely they're around you. They have some type of physical connection with you or some type of um, connection that they keep with you and you're probably aware of it. Um, they want you to know that they see you as a person who loves everyone, who has a lot of unconditional love. They also see you as the Queen of Cups. So they view you as being very loving, very nurturing, very motherly, very strong. 
um, very compassionate, you know what I mean, as well as very, uh, I want to say emotionally evolved, but I'm thinking like deeper than that, like uh, there's a deepness to you, because we got the hermit here too, which is a deep person, very introspection, very wise, um, a person who doesn't mind isolation or doesn't mind, like loneliness doesn't kill you, you know what I mean, because you know that you're not alone, and that's... Like this pile is very aware of their ancestors. It says that they see you as, as enlightened because you have a uh, crown chakra here. So they see you as very tapped in and very connected to them and connected to source or connected to spirit or connected to the universe or connected to God. They see you as being very connected, being tapped in, turned on. Um, they see you as being someone who's very trusting and they want you to, to be careful of who you trust. Because it says, I cannot trust anyone. So they want you to be careful of who you trust. Because they see you as being someone who gives love to everyone. All right? Because of that childhood, that childlike energy. But they also see you as someone who's very stern, not very stern, very stable or very grounded. They see you as creating your own uh, beliefs, your own belief system. And they see you becoming rooted. They think of you as a foundation, some type of foundational person. Because we also have resources here too, which is the second house. So they see you as being stable. Uh, someone who can gain a lot of material abundance, a lot of uh, material wealth. Um, they see you as a person who's very uh, intellectually smart too, like able to think through, think things through. So, oh, okay, so with, and with confessions over top of that. So they see you as being able to think through your feelings and emotions and able to convey them to other people. So this is probably something that they, were, they weren't very really used to because they see this as a talent and a gift that you can convey your feelings and your emotions to other people. You know, feelings, confession is usually about agonies on or about um, about a scandal, you know what I mean? Things that aren't necessarily readily accepted by society. So they see you as someone who's not afraid to express yourself even though it may not necessarily be accepted by society. So they find that as a rare gift, all right? Now you may have other rare gifts, but that's a gift that they find to be very rare and they're very surprised that you have it. And I say surprised. So they're, I guess they're surprised that you have it. So that may not be necessarily a family trait that you guys have. You must have been one who broke that pattern or brought this into the physical, brought this into your ancestral lineage. All right, like this is maybe new patterns that you brought to your ancestral ancestral lineage, all right? Um, they see you as a leader and of a pack and that you leave no one behind. So there's that that energy of them Seeing you as a person who loves everyone is very unconditional and they need you to start knowing you cannot trust everyone. All right. You can love everyone, but you cannot trust everyone. All right. Um, they do see you as a very fiery person. I want to say fiery firecracker. You know what I mean? Someone who's very excitable. So oh, I never gave you the signs, huh? Let me give you all the signs. Dang, my bad. Or this could be you. This could be the ancestors. So you got Capricorn, Capricorn, Taurus. Um, we have. Ca uh, cancer we have cancer pisces scorpio we have leo taurus aquarius scorpio we have virgo we have aries we have gemini and that's all that's all we have okay all right so i'll say this again at the end so we can remember the signs okay but anyway um they see you as someone who people can trust with their secrets all right like you're a person who helps people to think it through like they don't have to necessarily impulsively move on decisions. You know, they find you as just being very tender, very innocent. You know, they don't think of you as like a threat. You're very calming. You know what I mean? You're a person that's one with all. Like you're very, not free flowing, but you're very connected. You know what I mean? They want you to know like you're a very strong conduit for spirit. Strong. All right. They want you to know it's like you're getting portals. You're, you're a person who could be probably in two places at once. And I don't mean that like in a mystical way, but I mean like, you know how you can be physically here, but you can be manifesting or, or mentally somewhere else and like really putting in work. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but like you could physically be somewhere, but mentally putting in work to create something else, if that makes sense to you. But that's, that's what the vibe is, all right? They see you as being very successful, all right? And breaking a lot of patterns and creating a lot of patterns with this world and with the, uh, with the uh, hermit. Uh, connected to it the hermit is a deep introspective contemplative discovering secrets to the to them and their to their inner world and so by discovering discovering secrets of your inner world you're able to discover secrets of the universe because all is one remember how i was saying that's how they see you as a person who sees everything as one you see the whole the whole grand scheme the bigger picture they see you as that all right 
and they see you as very stable and able to connect or collect a lot of resources or a lot of physical abundance, money, wealth, uh, stability. Um, they just see you as being very strong and not necessarily rigid, but very strong and sturdy in your own beliefs that you've created. All right. Um, they see you as like offering a lot of love through thought or through communication, through speaking or through um, intellectual stimulation. So through maybe writing or singing or maybe I, I thought uh, computer coding, I thought like coding or something or something with technology, like you're you do something kind of complex. You know what I mean? But or even you could just be talking. You know what I mean? You could just be like a counselor who you express a lot of emotions and feelings with people because confessions and thinking it through is about allowing other people to com uh, communicate to you their feelings, their deepest, darkest secrets and you helping walk them through it. So you could be someone of like some some sort of like a healer, a psychologist, psychiatrist, uh, life coach, you know what I mean? Or a sp spiritual healer of some sort. Or you could just be, you know, a good friend, a grand friend to other people, but you have your own individuality and they acknowledge that like you're your own person. You're not, you're not like, I guess maybe the other ancestors or your other family members, you're your own person. You stand out. And with this Aries energy, Aries energy is a very independent person. They're a very go-getter person, very assertive. So they see you as that very fiery, very assertive, but yet very nurturing. All right. They view you as a person who's easy, like able to get along with other people very well because you got conjunction here, which is about union, which is about strengthening, uh, strengthening two, two polarities or strengthening two different uh, energies, bringing people together, stuff like that. Like they see you as a person who can bring a lot of people together or bring people together, even though you're an individual, even though you're usually by yourself or because the hermit is usually a person who's by themselves. So if you're not necessarily always by yourself, you prefer to be in your own company. So it's that type of energy, like you have a lot of independence, you know, and they see you and they view you as that. They view you as a person who's having a large, a great journey of self-discovery and self-exploration. Like it never stops for you. It constantly keeps going. You're constantly uh, evolving, constantly learning more about yourself because that's what the hermit does. The hermit learns more. And, you know, with the world, the world is about patterns, cycles. You know, it's also about good karma. You know, anytime there's a circle, it's usually about uh, cycles or patterns or karma because karma goes in a circle what goes around comes around so it's something like that so they see you as getting good karma or being like very uh aligned like things are always aligned for you they're always working in your favor and they view that for you all right they also see you as a person who's not afraid to go after things or to um like move forward push forward for like better opportunities to look forward to like the new possibilities they see you as a as a child, I was going to say a child because that's what keeps coming to me as a child that is able to uh, see outside of where they currently are. Like you're not stuck to old feelings and emotions. They see you as being able to disconnect from those and move forward with optimism about what lies ahead. So they see you as being very futuristic with your beliefs, very futuristic with your, I want to say structure. Is it structure I'm thinking? Cause that's not really what I'm getting at, like the picture I'm getting, but maybe we'll just say structure, you know, cause it's something because they, they see you as being stable and having stability and being able to build like some type of groundedness and having your own level of groundedness. But they also see you as being very empowering to other people through individuality. So maybe you teach other people to be individual or individualized by maybe either you exercising it or maybe you might really just be a teacher who teaches people individualization, individualization. So maybe that's something you do here, but they just see you as always continuing to be on a loving journey or soul exploration of yourself. So like always learning more about yourself and more about like maybe the world at large or more about your own beliefs, you know, and then learning this and then opening your heart or allowing yourself to be very receptive to other people and understanding of other people's plight. So they just see you as being very tender, all right? Very tender, stable, yet ferocious, but sometimes they see you as being too loving, too gentle, you know, and they want you to know, like, don't trust everyone. Though everyone deserves your love, don't trust everyone. That's not in your best interest at this time because you have rare gifts. You're very tender, you're very innocent, and the world is, hasn't really seen this and they're not used to seeing this. So to them, you are a rarity and you're like a very special you know, ancestor that they share or a very, um, what is it, what do we call it? descendant. You're a very important descendant of this family to them or of your ancestral line to them. 
um, they want you to just be watchful of the people that you break bread with, all right? So people maybe you make money with, you work with, you hang out with, whatever. Be careful of those people, all right? Because that's I guess those are the ones, you know, because maybe because you're being individual and not really caring too much about other people. Because individuals usually don't care about status. They usually don't care about fame or rep or pretty much anything outside of themselves and their needs, their basic wants and needs. So that may sometimes come off as intimidating. That could come off as intimidating. So that may be something here where it makes people want to subconsciously compete with you or sabotage you. And it's usually the people that are closest to you because those are the people who, you know, they grew with you. And once you outgrow them or outrank them, is a feeling of them feeling like, um, like they're not good enough. And there's always that need. It's not always a need, but most times there's a need to want to drag you down and bring you back to size, cut you down back to size, bring you back to reality. That's most times the intent. All right. But they see you as a person who's not afraid to walk away from those situations either. Like with love, with love and with optimism of something great coming along anyway. And that makes them very proud. All right. That makes them very proud of you. <clears throat> they see that you are part of a community or they feel like you're part of their community. Like you know that they're part of a community around you. So they're just like actively in your life, actively communicating with you and they feel like you recognize the signs and the signals that are coming through to you. All right. Hmm. The C was merging. Oh, merging new beliefs, your individuality with old family patterns. So, <clears throat> so maybe you're, um, you must be like integrating previous patterns or like previous beliefs that your family once shared and integrated the beliefs that you have now. They see you as merging that and doing a very good job because that's very complex. And that's what they see you as being a person who very much understands complexity. So you get the traditional practical ways of doing things and then you have the new age way of doing things and you found a way to like meld them together and they love that about you all right they see you as opening your heart and releasing past resentment guilt shame and all that and just coming into an energy of just accepting your individuality and accepting who you are as you are all right and so that's how they view you you know they view you as just knowing that you're not alone they, they view you as being very enlightened and very tapped in, you know what I mean? So this is, I'm like, I'm, I'm telling you things that I'm quite sure that you know, you know what I mean? But I just want to give it to you again so that way you know that you know and you're on the right path. All right, so let's go over the signs again. We have Cancer, Taurus, Capricorn, Capricorn, Aries, Gemini, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, Virgo, all right? Here's your advice though, courage, dare to be different, to make mistakes, create, for it is in creation that you exist. In this world of dreams that stem from the eternal heart, you are one with all creation. All is possible. Go forth and be true to yourself, for it is only through being true to you that you can be true to others. And then we have patience. Patience is required at the moment. You may feel that things are not moving as fast as you would like, yet the current situation has a lot going on energetically. The current situation causing concern is evolving positively. Let go and have patience. You will realize, you will eventually realize that this whole event was in fact a blessing. All is perfect as it is. Trust, you are eternally loved and guided. So, Pile 1, that was your reading. Thanks for watching. This is your boy Nuni, and this is Leo in the Third House. <coughs> Boom, Pile 2. So, Pile 2, how do your ancestors view you? It's kind of short. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's just set up differently. Okay. I see what I did here. I did it differently. Oh, okay. 
Okay, so your ancestors see you as being a little bit uh, maybe anxious or a little bit worried. They see you as trying to uh, trust in spirit. All right, so let's go with the signs real quick. Real quick. All right, we got Scorpio. We have uh, Capricorn, Libra, Aries, Cancer. We have Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, Scorpio. We have Aquarius again. We have Scorpio again. We have Pisces. We have Leo. And then we have Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Okay. <clears throat> so this could be your ancestors or this could be you. Or you could be taking on the energy of this or they could be taking on the energy of this. All right. Just follow me along for a second. Okay. All right. So this has to do with your relationships. All right. They see you as being kind of codependent and working on boundaries, coming up with new solutions or coming up with new ideas about boundaries. So maybe you're strengthening your boundaries or you're getting a more clear vision because we got Neptune energy here, which has to do with the vision. All right. And that's usually about um, not being able to see the past or not being able to see it in front of you, but needing to be totally aware and present in the physical moment. What's happening right in front of you, not what's happening down the line, what's not what's happening to the left or to the right or behind you, but what's going on right now. And they see you as coming up with new ideas and becoming more bold at setting boundaries. So they see you as kind of like struggling with it, but putting in a lot of effort. So was, I felt like it was anxiety because they feel like they see you. Well, I, I feel like they see you or view you as bowling over or feeling a little bit um, like rattled. You know what I mean? So they see you as having feelings from, for a long term uh, friend or something like that who wants more than friendship. So they see you as maybe dating someone or being in some type of long term relationship or having someone who's been around for a very long time who maybe is uh, putting on the act of wanting to be a friend or who's been a friend for a while but really has intentions of being more and it's kind of in a sneaky way or in, in a way that's not it's not the most direct if, if I'm saying it. it's kind of like they're because all these animals that I see are not animals that are like very direct we have a pigeon we have a possum we have a lizard these are like low crawling animals who usually stay out of the way of other people because they're not really prey or they're not really um predators their prey you know or they usually move around at night where other people can't see them or mess up their plans so this could be like a sneaky type of person um who they're talking about um, but they're but they're saying this is bringing out your ability to feel and to trusting yourself allowing yourself to feel allowing yourself to feel emotions and trusting in them um, it's also about allowing you to feel more at home within yourself feeling more confident more peaceful um Uh, they see you as like de decompressing, taking time out for yourself. All right. But they, uh, they also want you to become more playful to really like let loose because with, uh, hold your vision. This could be about stubborn energy and not like, and only having a, in a sense, like tunnel vision, only seeing what you want to see with ideas here. This is usually about initiating new thoughts. So this is, could be you being bold and coming up with new thoughts and not just keeping your mind on this tunnel vision or seeing relationships or seeing this situation from like uh, maybe like a straight, a straight and narrow way. Like you're learning to maybe stretch the boundaries or stretch coming into new ideas of like maybe some type of boundaries. They just see you working through codependency. So your, your family or ancestry people, ancestors must have had a pattern of like being in relationships with people who they genuinely didn't want to be with or being in relationships with people for like maybe material or for like finance or for wealth or for like public perception. You know what I mean? Because codependency is just feeling that you need someone and that you can't be alone, that you can't do things on your own, that you need someone else to validate your feelings and emotions. And they see you as being very uh, innocent, you know, and very loving, very nurturing, very sensual, you know, or just very like huggy kissy, you know what I mean? Like not quite compassionate, but just like very touchy, very feely, you know, they see you as being like a, like a lover, like a lover, you know what I mean? Uh, independent lover, not an independent lover, but, a, uh, but I guess that's what they're trying to get you to become is like an independent lover, a person who can love, but doesn't need people in order for you to feel loved, you know? So I guess like they want you to learn a level of self-love 
though I don't have the heart chakra here, this is like a transformation. They want you to come into like new beliefs, new core truths for yourself. So like Pluto energy is about like stripping away, you know, toxic. It's almost like Saturn energy, but it's a little bit different because Pluto can really shake you up and really rack you. Saturn is kind of like it beats you down until you get the lesson. Pluto kind of like wrecks shop. It's almost like a bull in a china shop where he's just bouncing around and clearing out all this stuff and just like causing destruction and things are falling apart and you just don't know why, like why? And it's all so that way you can get into a level of power, a personal power and finding what's true for you. What really gets you going? It's not like, it's not quite like Vesta, but it's like, what, are, what do you want this dynamic to change? Why do you want this power? What will you do with this power? Will you create destruction or will you create empowerment? So they see you as doing something like that. They view you as going through some type of renewal that's probably causing some type of destruction within your life. But at the same time, and I say this like maybe in a relationship or this could just be in general, maybe there's a relationship that you've had or relationships that you've had are causing this. Because when, when Neptune energy is here, that means that you're not quite seeing situations clearly. Like you're projecting a fantasy or you're projecting um, how you think it could be. You know what I mean? Kind of like hopefulness, wishfulness. You know what I mean? It's, it's not really, because uh, when Neptune energy shows up, I know it has to do with boundaries are lacking. Because Neptune energy is usually about not knowing about boundaries or having reality. It's like reality and dreams come together. They mesh and melt together. You can't tell which what from, from the other, what's real from the other. So it's that energy of having this in relationships, you know, and just being kind of like a free spirited type of person because we got the sun here right next to that. So it's just like going into relationships or going into situations without not really, without clearly seeing them, without seeing them for what they really are or how they really are. You're just kind of like going into them willy nilly. And that's how they view you. They view you as putting your time and your efforts in the wrong place, you know, and, and wanting to negotiate. Cause I see this five of swords, five of swords for me with in reverse is a negotiation. It's called a peaceful resolution, which is in fact a negotiation. So they see you as negotiating and putting your time and your efforts into the wrong fights. You know, you're not seeing those situations clearly cause it's attached to the, uh, it's attached to Neptune, but they're saying that these relationships are transforming you and giving you another level of personal power and independence. All right. And they want you to hold your vision. So you may have a vision of what you expect relationships to be like or what your happily ever after would be or what type of completion you would like to have. And they're saying trust in the universe, trust in the flow of spirit. Like you're already on the path. You're in the right in the right realm of where you're going. You're tapped in. Your third eye is being activated because this is third eye chakra. This this also could be because um, it's purple, so it also could be the crown chakra. But the but the um, the illustration is showing me is the is the, the the third eye chakra. All right, but what they want you to do is start seeing the world through the eyes of a child. They want you to be free, though. They do want you to be free. All right, and they want you to be more direct. Speak what you really feel. Say what you really feel. You know, you don't always have to communicate or always have to prove a point. That's what it is. It's like proving a point, wanting to win, wanting to best someone out. And that's what they're saying here. You're wanting to win or wanting to best someone out, best, best the situation. I don't know how that makes sense to you, but it's saying don't let anyone, don't let anyone breadcrumb you. They want, they want to have their cake and eat it too. Fuck that. So this is, a, this is about codependency. Okay. This is about codependency and you holding on and clinging. And this is how they're viewing you. They're viewing you as going through this transformation that's meant for you with North Node. So somewhere that you're destined or meant to go. And what they're, what they're saying this is, what they're saying is that this situation is causing uh, feelings and emotions that you've kept suppressed. They're causing them to come up so that you can heal them. And they're saying, trust the process. When it says trust the universe, trust the process, go along with it. So sacral chakra is here too, which is about going with the flow. You know, coming up with creative ways to make things happen, but it's also a sense of homeliness. So this is this is this is giving you a sense of homeliness, of comfort within yourself. This is what this is about. This is giving you a excuse me. This is a rebirth. This is what this, they want you to know. They view you as going through a rebirth, and you're right on time. You're right on path. You're on your north node. They want you to know that this was divinely guided for you to learn and to break some familiar patterns. All right. They say, let go of the burdens of, uh, or let go of the burdens of responsibility. Go in this moment and look at the world with the eyes of a child. 
So you're coming up with new ideas. There are new, there's new um, information that's been uncovered or unveiled, revealed to you. So that's what's been going on here. And you're starting to see things a little bit more clearly. And they're telling you to really put your eyes on, put your goggles on, put your 3D glasses on, because things are coming right at you pretty much. All right. It says, are you up for the conversation with your inner child to heal and stop numbing the pain? Give yourself the love your inner child always longed for. So you're breaking codependency habits. That's how they view you. They view you as struggling with it a little bit, but they see you as being on, on time and on point, right where you need to be. And what they're saying is find a way to be more playful, be more childlike. Go ahead and say what, what's on your mind. If you just, if it comes off harsh or, or a little bit rude, that's okay. Learn to like go with the flow. Learn to just like you know, recognize, because I want to say recognize when you're putting your effort and your time in the wrong places. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're gaining clarity. Clarity is being gained here about boundaries and about, um, I want to say the future because you got make a be bold and make a first move about your holding your vision. And the vision has to be about something in the future. So they're saying you're getting a lot more clear about your future and your intentions on where you want things to go. Because you were in an energy, like I said, of putting your time and your effort in the places where you're where it, it wasn't being valued or where you were like fighting a losing battle and it wasn't going in, in the direction that you wanted it to. Communication could have been off. You know, the thoughts in the in the uh and the ideas or the thoughts and the intentions of where you wanted it to go were like skewed or they were they were they weren't very direct. That's really what it's about. Like they want you to recognize that like it's okay to have fun and go out, but what was going on in this situations or these situations weren't very clear and you were putting a lot of time and energy and effort and negotiating and like appraising and they weren't getting you anything that you were looking for, but they were saying this is good because this was about your evolution and growing and this was going to help you transform and break a pattern or a cycle or regain some level of power. And usually when Pluto shows up, it's, it can be, a, you know, it can be about taking power back and then utilizing it on whoever took the power from you in the first place. But it can also be about you gaining the power back from someone who you voluntarily gave, uh, gave power over you and then using that power to empower both of you, you know what I mean? Through, you know, not necessarily mean that you have to be back in a relationship, but meaning that you, by you and strengthening yourself and empowering yourself and choosing yourself, you're teaching them to heal those same similar wounds. So they see you as being right on time, right on point, going where you're supposed to be. They're saying it's a little bit of a learning curve. Yes, it is difficult, but you're doing a great job. That's what they want you to know. And they want you to become more playful. All right. And allow yourself to feel like don't try to suppress things. They want you to feel it because it says here, are you up for the conversation with your inner child to heal and stop numbing the pain? Give yourself the love your inner child always wants. And that's what they wanted you to do. And it says here, nurture your body, mind and spirit. Allow emotions to surface and release. They want you to feel these feelings so that way you can break this codependent pattern. They see you as going through it, working on it, and they want you to keep that vision in mind. Keep the end goal, the end result in mind because you're very close to achieving that goal. Trust in the, in the process. Trust in where spirit is leading you. You're right on point. You're right where you need to be. You're following your life's goal. You're following your life's purpose or the journey, and you're doing it. You're doing very well. They want you to be aware that someone who you love or someone who is trying to be like a friend who really wants emotions or really wants a connection with you is really trying to have their cake and eat it too. All right. They're trying to breadcrumb you, meaning they're giving you less than what you deserve. And what they're saying is this is healing you to be able to see more clearly the relationship dynamics that you've been allowing and the lack of boundaries that you haven't been having. All right. But they want you to learn to express yourself, even if it comes off critical or harsh. Okay. So be aware. <clears throat> All right. So let me give you the signs one more time. I'm going to wrap this up. So we have Capricorn, Libra, Cancer, Aries, Leo, Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, Aquarius, Scorpio, Pisces, Leo, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Here's your advice. <clears throat> Encouragement. Your love is invaluable to the earth and to those around you. Even though you may not always see the positive effect your love has on others. Trust, 
for it does. Each time you offer love through a, a loving gesture, thought, or word, you plant a seed of love. And love always generates more love. Trust and continue your loving work. <clears throat> so, Pow to, that was your reading. Thanks for watching. This your boy Nuni, and it's Leo in the third house. three so pile three how do your ancestors view you okay so your ancestors see you as awakening awakening they see you as being part of divination because we got divination here and they see you as dropping a mask all right um, they see you as a person who doesn't really trust people though but they do see you as very stable they see you as being maybe kind of stable with a, a act that you put on or some type of disguise that you put on. Some type of, I don't know, something to hide you. Something to hide maybe your face or something to hide um, like your, maybe your behaviors or something to hide you. Like they, they see you as doing something to hide you, but it's gained you stability or some type of, um, it's gained you some type of foundation, some type of steady, stern foundation. They want you to know that you're shielded and that you can trust your heart, okay? So they want you to know that you're coming into an energy of personal power. Um, you're bringing unconsciousness to light. So this is bringing like um, things that were hidden to you. This could be, this is what we consider secrets. Things that you maybe had known at one point, but you suppressed them, pushed them down, but they're coming back up into light now. And you're starting to recognize them. And with mask here, that means that someone is being deceptive, but it won't last for long, all right? So let me give you the signs. We have Capricorn, uh, Aquarius, Scorpio, Gemini, uh, Scorpio, Scorpio and Aries, Pisces, Gemini, Pisces, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Okay. So they want you to know that you've done this before. All right. You have soul gifts and memories. So this isn't brand new stuff to you. This is you recur, re, like recovering things. So what's coming up? Okay, you must be just coming into spirituality. That must be what you're just now discovering. And if you've already been into it, you must be coming to another level of recognizing other spiritual gifts that you have. All right. So it's like the mask is coming off. So it's like no longer deceiving yourself or no longer deceiving others. So it's something that you were once doing that you were hiding and keeping hidden because mask is here and it's probably like a spiritual belief and it could be divination so maybe you could be doing tarot reiki or astrology or believing in astrology or believing in any of this spiritual stuff right that was hidden at one time and they're saying now that you're becoming more comfortable and that these things are coming up now because you've already done this this is not new new information or new work to you they don't want you to be thinking that you've never done this before in fact you're skilled at this all right you're a messenger Okay, what they're saying is expect good luck. It's about to show up in your life and spirit is smiling down on you with abundance and blessings. So they see you as being very blessed, all right, being covered, being very protected, all right? And they see you as uncovering yourself, unveiling yourself, like unveiling yourself to the world. This is the answer you need are coming. So they see you as communicating, talking, speaking your truth. That's what they see you as doing, speaking your truth now. You know, laughing off the, the old past situations that that um, didn't play how you expected them to. I think of Gemini as being a sign of expectations, you know, but um, maybe that's that. They see you as being a very funny person or a very jokey joke type of type of person. They, they, they're like amused at you. Like, you know, they like they love to see you um, be a child and laugh and joke and kid and, you know, tee hee ha ha. Like they, they love to see you enjoy yourself. That's how they view you. They view you as a person who's like very much enjoying yourself, but they also view you as a person who doesn't trust people. So, you know, there's that. They do see you as working very hard and being drained a lot. You know what I mean? I guess maybe because, you know, when you're when you're discovering your gifts, your spiritual your spiritual gifts, it can get kind of draining, you know, because it's like new information that you're taking in. This is a new growth. It's like new it's like it's so growth, but think of it like new hair growth. Like, you know, it's like, wow, where did all this come from? where did all this come from and that's kind of like what it is for you it's like recognizing like oh snap i got i got powers i got spiritual gifts i, I i'm intuitive i'm psychic um you know what i mean like 
I can sing, I can dance, I can think like this, I can speak like this, I, I understand complexity like this. Like you have some type of spiritual gifts that's being revealed to you and it's coming up and you're starting to either get comfortable with it or they're telling you to become more comfortable with it and accept it because it's coming in. They're saying that you're a messenger, all right? And they're saying that blessings and abundance are coming down on you, that God is smiling down on you. And this is probably because you've acknowledged that you have spiritual gifts and you're becoming one with them. <clears throat> it says you are finding balance as you see what resonates and does not. And that's what they're saying. Yeah, you're starting to see what works for you and what does not. Like what's true for you, what's, what's not. And you're taking off this mask of maybe pretending to be something that you're not. All right. With the Mars energy here, this means that you're being driven to get rid of karmic past behaviors, to get outside of your comfort zone, to get outside of what you've always done. But this is also about putting into action past spiritual gifts. That's what uh, the South Node represents. It represents your past gifts that you already had before. So they're saying that you're putting into action past gifts that you've had from a lifetime before. So you want you to know this. This isn't brand new to you. Don't let me say that to you again. It's not brand new to you. You've done this before. You're doing it again. But with Mars energy, that means that you're being more driven, more assertive, and you're moving a lot faster than you probably did in your last lifetime. So this time, this time they're saying that you're learning to integrate two sides of yourself. Meditating, contemplating, they see you as being a very emotionally deep type of person. A person who can pick up a lot of information through meditation or picks up a lot of information through sitting and processing feelings and emotions, all right? They do see you as being maybe a little bit, um, I wanna say hot and cold because I got a lot of duality. I got Pisces energy and I got Gemini energy. So that's, you know, seeing like a lot of duality, a lot of hot and cold. And with the Pisces energy here right next to, I mean, with the uh, Scorpio energy right next to Gemini energy, that's the energy of um, having a fear of expressing or being close or having a fear of intimacy. They see you as that. They see you as trying to breathe through that and work through that. And that's where the mask is coming off. Like you're working through emotional fears or intimacy fears of allowing people to see you be vulnerable, of allowing people to see you either be hurt or not know or not feel strong enough or not feel capable enough. They see you working through that. This is how your ancestors are viewing you, but they view you as being very stable still, okay? Being very reliable, all right? But they do see you fluctuate back and forth between being very sure to being a little bit more questioning or self-questioning. And they want you to know that you're, that you're, um, that you can trust your heart, that you're shielded, you're protected during this time. So trust how you feel, okay? With Scorpio energy here, is that's usually like when you use a mask, or you might have been uh, as a person who likes to protect themselves from getting too close to other people. You don't want to allow too many people, you know, like close to you. You don't want them to see who you really are. So maybe that's what the mask is about, not allowing people to really see who you really are or get close to you emotionally. Like it's a way of protecting yourself from being hurt. With meditate and contemplate, that can usually indicate if it's a relationship that would indicate um, being in relationships that are hot then cold then hot then cold. So that's why I say I would get you as being someone who's very hot and cold, but yet knows how to laugh off situations as if it's not that much of a big deal. You know, you're very good at communicating your truths and communicating what you're thinking, but they're saying that you have a little bit of issue when it comes to communicating what you feel. Right, like you may deceive others and not really express that, and they view you as that, but they view you as being very enlightened as well. And a person who sees life from uh, from a different perspective than others, also more likely a highly enlightened perspective than others, they see you as being very tapped in, tuned in as well. But they also see you as a person who could be a little bit childish or a little bit petty. Um, you could be a little bit uh. Uh, not forceful, but you could be like a, a, a competitor or combative a lot. Like they see you as being combative, yet sometimes not really thinking things through. Like, you know, maybe giving the impression of you thought about it, but you kind of like already made a quick judgment about things. So they see you as that. They see you as like seeing the world from your own perspective and then making a quick judgment and, you know, giving off the air of like, oh, well, I thought about it, but you didn't really think about it. So that's how they see you. They see you as like, you know, telling people that you're considering them or telling things like making excuses. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe is, it, is it excuses? Maybe it's not excuses, but it's like kind of like they see you as not really giving things time, like not giving your thoughts time to really like sink in. Like you just kind of like 
go with what, what kicks in and just go. So they want you to start uh, sitting still, like contemplating, really considering this. They want you to work on your craft too, because we got eight of pentacles here. So they want you to work on your craft, to really sit back and think about your craft, to really inspect it, to get to know the finer details. So whatever new gifts or spiritual, uh, spiritual gifts you discovered about yourself, they want you to hone in on those, practice on those, become a master in those, because the eight of pentacles is about learning mastery by repetition, continuously working it. So they want you to continuously work at whatever spiritual gifts or spiritual information you've learned. They want you to keep doing that. They're saying that this is information that you've already had before, skills that, that you've already possessed. So this shouldn't take you much longer to be able to utilize these and make something of it. They're saying that abundance is coming. You're a messenger. Time for you to get up and start communicating. And we got the answers you need are coming, meaning that there's going to be a communication that's going to inspire you or open you up to a new way of thinking. And it's going to allow you to talk. Or it could be someone maybe coming in to communicate with you and rectify a situation where you may just need to laugh it off and just, you know, push forward, push on. You know what I mean? So it could be something like that. <clears throat> um, but they do see you as being a person who's very, like, very petty, you know, or very just, you know, combative when it comes to other perspectives. Like if people don't see things the way you see them, you can be a little bit nippy or you can kind of like cut people off. Like, you know, maybe you, maybe you separate from them or you cut them off in mid sentence. You know what I mean? Kind of like, like a, ugh, like a, almost like a stone wall, like, mm, you know what I mean? So it's like that, but they want you to, to work on your, uh, work on your, on your, um, your craft. Like, get get better at it. Do something with it. Like, you know, really put the time and effort to become a master in it. You know, learn mastery of it. You know, they want you to pay attention to those finer details of it. All right. Um, but they also want to stay like, they see you having fun and enjoying. So they want you to keep doing that. And they want you to just get into this level of mastery, mastering old habits and mastering your past. So your past, your past, um past behaviors, past pattern beliefs and all that stuff. They want you to master those and get over those. So that way you can get into a new version of yourself. They're saying that you have your uh, your past talents that you had before that you brought from another life, that you have them and you're exercising and putting them forward. And now it's time for you to really like step it up and vamp it up. And in order to do that, you're going to need to get more information and really contemplate the meaning of whatever it is that you have, whatever spiritual belief or whatever spiritual gift that you have they want you to really contemplate it and really get a clear understanding of it and understand how it works like they really like if you look at this car she's like really examining this like you know what i mean so you want to really examine whatever spiritual gift or spiritual talents you have really dig deep all right um they're saying that you're going to notice your, your your um they, they view you as noticing some type of limitations you have. I was going to say that they see you as they, they notice you having some type of limitations. So you, they notice it and you must be noticing it too. Some type of li uh, limitation you have is having to do with stagnancy. All right. Because that's what the Mars energy is here for to break you out of that, to like amplify this energy of getting things done. So even though you're most likely a woman, they want you to get into this masculine energy of getting things done. You know what I mean? Being assertive, being aggressive, being dominant. You know, but dominating your old habits, you know, what I mean, dominate the old version of you. You know, what I mean, that's what they really want you to do. Beat out the old version of you. You have a job to do. They want you to know that this isn't a new job to you, though. You've done this already. So be ready. They want you to be ready. OK, so here's your advice. It says, oh, it says and they want you to embrace the flow of life. Cause they said that you're protected. So they want you to embrace the flow of life, have more fun. Cause that's what ham it up with the pig means. They want you to have more fun, you know what I mean? And go with the flow of life. You know, someone may be trying to, um, someone may be trying to talk over you. If not talk over you, someone may be trying to, um, if it's not someone talking over you, it's you that do that to other people where you talk over other people or you like you're, you're a very fast talker where, you know, sometimes people have to be aware of what you say because you could lead them astray with the way that you talk. So they say you as being as like that's like an old pattern or old talent that you had of possibly leading people astray with words or with verbal, something like that. You know, what I mean, but they want you to kind of get a hold of that. Not kind of. They want you to get a hold of that because that's your comfort zone. That's your old past old behaviors. So they want you to get a hold of that. Here's your advice, though believe be open to all possibilities and opportunities 
let go of preconceived ideas. There is nothing to fear. You are constantly surrounded by love. There is, oh, <laughs> start to believe in yourself and trust your instincts. Wondrous possibilities and opportunities abound, provided you are flexible and retain an open heart and mind. Believe all is possible. And then we have forgiveness. Holding on to a past hurt is preventing you from moving forward and achieving your heart's desires. Let it go. Forgiveness does not mean that you condone another's actions. It simply means that you are no longer willing to be a perpetual victim to a particular person or event. Blame is a waste of your precious energy. Bless and surrender the past. For in doing so, you will reclaim the joy of life. So let's go over the signs one more time. We have Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Gemini, Pisces, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, Gemini again, Scorpio, Scorpio, Aries. Okay. So pile three, that was your reading. Thanks for watching. This your boy Nooney and this Leo in the third house. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> Boom. Pile four. So, pile four. How do your ancestors view you? They see you as writing past wrongs. All right. They see you as uprooting and finding solutions. They see you as being very receptive, yet being a bit guarded. Oh, but they see you stepping outside of your comfort zone and bringing love to a situation. So, they see you being more of a friend to people. Um, they see you as releasing control. Okay, so you could be a Aquarius. You could be a Taurus. You could be a Cancer. You could be a Libra. I mean, not a Libra. Maybe maybe you could be a Libra. I see Scorpio here. So you could be a Scorpio. You could be a Leo. Um, you could be a Taurus, Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio. Okay. All the fixed signs are here. So you could be one of the fixed signs or you could be an Aquarius. We got two Tauruses, two Leos, one Aquarius, one Scorpio. Two Aquariuses, one on Scorpio. So this could be your ancestors, could be you, you know, whatever, right? All right, so they see you as righting some type of wrongs, okay? Uprooting past beliefs, finding new solutions, gaining clarity. They see you as calming down. That's what they see you as. They see you as relaxing and calming down, healing this energy. So they see, so the first card out is I'm sorry. So they see you as healing this energy of insecurity and vulnerabilities or feeling defenseless. They see you as healing that. Okay. They view you as a person who is very guarded, but they see you coming into an energy of opening up your heart and allowing new people in. They say it's time for you to really to re receive new information and recover a new life. All right. They see you. It says, what does it say? It says next new moon. Go outside and connect with the moon and the earth. Rene relief, release negative thoughts and be gentle with yourself and bring love into the situation is right next to it. And that's about detaching with love without having any expectations for how things will be. And it's also about being a true friend to people. All right. Without being judgy. All right. So this is what that's, that's what they, they view you as. They view you as being very gentle and being able to connect and be very receptive, but they also see you healing some type of deep-seated pain or, or vulnerabilities that you've had for a while. They see you as gaining clarity and getting new information on how to handle that, all right? So you got two cards of information coming in and that you're ready for it. So you're getting new information. They want you to go tap in out there with the moon, the next new moon, and they want you to uh, connect with it so that way you can release your negative thoughts. They want you to be more gentle with yourself. But they see you as being gentle with other people and getting outside your comfort zone. So they see you as like releasing and being on the right path as well because we got first quarter moon here. So they see you as being on the right path and putting in the, the correct work. So you're doing the right work here because you are healing insecurities. And they see you doing that. And they feel like it's being intensified with your thinking. Like the way you're thinking is finding brand new solutions to this. All right. They see you as submitting to spirit or submitting to the universe, submitting to like grounding yourself or rooting yourself. You know what I mean? But they also see you as uprooting 
previous uh, previous patterns. So they see you as breaking those things, yet being able to ground yourself in who you are or ground yourself in, yeah, in who you are. Yes, that's what they see it is. All right. Now they see you as um, maybe rekindling some type of family pattern or like healing some type of, oh yeah, that's what it is, healing. Because the six of, six of Cups can be about healing childhood wounds. So they could see you as healing some type of childhood wounds, some type of uh, like discrepancies you had. This could be like abuse. And because I got five of wands and five of swords and ten of swords. So this could be like some type of abuse. You know what I mean? Um, this could be like with children too, not being abusive with children. They view you as maybe not being abusive towards children or um, not being too much of a fighter. Like not maybe being like a physical fighter, being more of like a lover a uh, person who patches things up, you know what I mean? And they see you as like healing some type of uh some type of vulnerability around that. They see you as gaining power though. So cuz you got uh, Pluto energy here which is about rebirth and which is about coming into power. This is a transformation. You know, it's a painful transformation too whenever Pluto shows up. It's a painful transformation cuz it brings you from the inside out. It's a psychological thing that really wears on you. It could be a lot. It can drain you a lot whenever you have like Pluto synastries or Pluto conjunctions or Pluto squares. This causes like a lot of painful growth. It brings up a lot of things that were hidden and repressed. A lot of shadow work gets done whenever you have Pluto interact with personal planets or even, well, usually whenever it interacts with personal planets, it does a lot of like shaking up and, and, and breaking down of things that are no longer serving you or old patterns that like kept you um, powerless or kept you feeling defenseless like you couldn't protect yourself from other people taking advantage of you they see you as going through some type of transformation now where at first you didn't really see potential in it and you weren't really willing to invest in it and so you kept like repeating the same pattern the same cycles but they see you now as like detaching from how you expect things to be so that's probably what kept you in those repeated patterns and cycles expecting things to be a certain way because the Ten of Cups here is in reverse, which usually is about putting on a facade of having a happily ever after or having a happily family pattern or having a happy family and whatnot. But it's also, it's, it's usually a facade though because it's not really true to who you are. It's true to what you think you should be doing, but it's not true to who you are. You know, so that's what this is about. They see you as like breaking out of some old family patterns, family beliefs, and healing that inner child within you. You know, they see you as like squashing some type of inner turmoil that you had or some type of inner dialogue that you had that seems a bit harsh or seems very combative. Like they like you're working through that. You're ending those patterns and ending those cycles. You're closing out these things. All right. They see you as being a little bit um uh maybe lazy. Maybe lazy. Like they view you as being kind of lazy, but I'm thinking like like not necessarily putting the most effort into it. They kind of see you as coasting, coasting into it. All right. But they say that you're doing a good job. Okay. So, cause that's, that's what this is about. Like clarifying with the, with the share, with the Sharon here, this is about clarifying what you're healing. So they're saying that you're very aware of what you're healing. You just may not be like putting your best foot forward, or you may not necessarily be moving as fast as you could or really putting the effort that you could, you know, like they feel like you're not as necessarily enthused about it, or you may be like denying the information that the ideas that spirit is giving you. Like you may not necessarily be open to the new ideas that are coming, even though it's time for you to receive new information. They see you as not necessarily being open to it, still being a bit defensive because you're trying to still defend yourself because of a childhood pattern. So they see you as still trying to like defend yourself from some type of childhood pattern or some type of old pattern, some type of old behavior. And this hasn't even for me from childhood. Six of Pentacles just could be like old memories of things that once felt good that, you know, we gloss over and make a better picture of than what they really were. So this could be like relationships that you thought were really romantic or were really fulfilling. And you may have just remembered the best parts about them and not necessarily the negative parts about them. It's that type of energy. Like they feel like you're healing through it, but there's like this expectation of maybe like a happily ever after and like the way that you see either seen it when you were growing up or the way that it was like taught to you or, or the way that you pictured it. It's not matching up with that. And they're saying whenever it is, when bring love into the situation shows up, it's a need to detach from how you expect things to play out because they may not be for you. 
You know what I mean? Stepping outside your comfort zone means coming into new gifts, new talents, a new arena, a new experience, a new environment, a new you. And with rebirth here, this is a new you, but they're saying that you're releasing control now. You're releasing, releasing and to control is more likely the expectations of how you think things would be. This needs to be this way. This would be my husband. I'll be married by 20. I'll be married by 30. I'm gonna have a house and this, that, and a third. My husband is gonna be like this. My wife is gonna be like this. They're gonna do this. They're gonna do that. That is the control. And so you're learning to let go of that. You know, that way you can get outside of what you've always gotten. Because when a North Node is here, it means that you're getting outside of the beaten path of what you've always done. So that's what's being what's being illuminated here. And they're viewing you as doing that. They, but they view you as not really seeing the potential and doing it. They see you as kind of wanting to repeat the same, the same patterns or the same cycles or being stuck in it because you're really looking for it to have like this happily ever after type of feeling. You know, like you're carrying on familiar beliefs and familiar emotional programming. That's what they see you doing. And they see you as like being really romantic and wanting to offer love but at the same time, being on guard or being a bit standoffish with other people, being a bit um, just contest, like contesting, contesting people, like like you know, bickering or like you know, defensive, like you know, I, like you're like your way is better than anybody else's way in a sense, you know, and that's that's how they see you. They see you as like still harping on things that you've gotten over already. So that's what they see you as doing. It's like holding on to a nostalgia of past disappointments or past letdowns or past disagreements or past discrepancies and still like lingering on it and holding it as a reason for why you can't step outside your comfort zone. I feel annoyed because that's well, that's like the message it was given was like, like you've used the same excuse or these same disappointments from years ago to stop you from doing new stuff. Wake up. That's what they're basically saying. It's like you, you got new information. New information has came to you and spirit has even delivered you information and ideas. You got purple chakra here all in here, which is your crown chakra, meaning that spirit is tapped in, that you're very tapped in. So spirit's been giving you all the information, all the ideas, and yet you're harping on past disappointments and letdowns and endings and trauma that you've already experienced. And not to mention, this is trauma and experience that you've already gotten over. So you've already processed it out and like, uh, and you're still using those reasons for the reason for you not to step outside your comfort zone and stop trying to project into your reality, a reality that was shared with you by either uh, ancestors, meaning like, you know, grandmothers, grandfathers, people who came before you, even mothers and fathers, uncles and aunties, you're still holding on to their beliefs and using though using past disappointments for the reason that you won't break their traditions. That's what they're saying. But they're saying that you've gotten new information. You're just not pushing forward with it. You're not utilizing it, and you're not putting your best. I, I, I kept saying putting your best foot forward because they see you as not seeing potential in it, as not seeing it going in any direction that you would like it to go. So you'd rather repeat the same pattern. And they're saying that you're you're getting out of your you're about to get out of your, your comfort zone like that's it's about to happen. They want you to tap in this next new moon so that you can release these little patterns that you've been running into because you've got clarity, you've gained some type of understanding. You just keep doing it over and over again. And so they're saying you've healed this, you've healed this, but you keep putting yourself in this defensive mode or this defenseless mode, like you can't make a difference in your life. Now, if it doesn't resonate, it doesn't resonate. But that's what these cards are saying here, and so. They want you to do something different. You already have all the information you need. All right. You have the solutions already. It's up here in your mental. So you already gained some type of clarity here. And now it's coming into the sense of personal power and you're needing to exercise it. All right. They're saying that new information is coming in. You need to be open to it because this is going to get you outside your comfort zone and get you what you truly want. Okay. So here's your advice. Prayer. Dear God, help me always to remember that this present life is but a fleeting moment within eternity. Help me always to remember that this life is but a dream. Help me always to remember that you exist within everyone and everything. Help me always to remember that love is all there is and all else is an illusion. So let's go over signs one more time. We have... 
Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo, Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, Taurus, Taurus, Cancer. Okay, so pile four. That was your reading. Thanks for watching. This is your boy Nooney, and it's Leo in the third house.